I saw Star Wars on the big screen when I was about 11, uh, in 1977, <laughs> and I fell in love, not with Han Solo or Luke Skywalker, but R2-D2, because, you know, he had an agenda, he had a character, he, um, he was so emotive, and he, he was just more than a machine, and I've always wanted to build things that are machines, but are more than machines. I went to MIT to learn how, and um, I learned a lot of great stuff at MIT, uh, engineering stuff, uh, mechanical, electrical, and computer science, but they didn't really know how to build good robots there. So right after um, MIT, with two co-founders, Vod Brooks and Colin Angle, I co-founded uh, iRobot. So you've had this front row seat uh, in the robotics <laughs> field. So where, what are you doing, and wh where do you think we are with robots? Well, there's just so many exciting spaces in robotics right now. I had the great opportunity to sit back last year. I was working uh, robotics for the Pentagon, and my appointment came to an end. And I said, what do I want to do, right? Time is the most precious commodity. I remember when I was growing up, uh, we always ate um, real um, fresh from the garden food, and I loved going out and picking tomatoes and peas but I never had time to have a garden when I was doing iRobot because I knew I wouldn't be able to do the upkeep. It would be like, I'd go to the garden and it'd be a weedy mess and it'd just make me like more stressed about everything and all the things on my to-do list. So I'm doing this company, Turtle, because I think it helps people have the garden of their dreams without having to spend all their time uh, taking care of it. And Turtle is just the first product we have on the market. <laughs> mm. I know, um, you know, with the pandemic, people did a lot more buying online, and commerce is like a 14 trillion. A lot more market. gardening too. Uh, yeah, a lot more gardening, and um, e-commerce I think has gone into double digits of uh, in the trillions. Mm -hmm. How much are robots playing a role in in working at fulfillment centers, and what, what are the things that you're tracking that you're interested in? Then I want to come back to this product that, that you right. have in your bag. Well. Amazon uh, bought Kiva, another great Boston robot company, and now they have over 350,000 uh, of these little orange robots um, working in the fulfillment centers, doing the job of the, uh, the runners, being able to get the product to where the packers can pack them up. And since they were bought by um, Amazon. There's been a whole bunch of robot startups in that space. Six River Systems, which was acquired by Shopify. There's um, Locus, uh, Waypoint Robotics, so many uh, companies in the local Boston area because of that initial anchor tenant. And the pre-anchor tenant to all of this, the consumer robots, the um, uh, the fulfillment center robots, the logistics robots, is the great universities that we have in town. The MIT, the Boston College, the BU, the um, Harvard even. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just uh, the whole cohort, Brandeis and Olin College, right? Uh, just having that mind share of people that are interested in robots coming out and uh, the companies to go to, um, learn how to be an entrepreneur, and then go out and start their own companies. It's just amazing. Great. So I know people refer to the PayPal mafia. A lot of people that were early on with PayPal and have gone off to do many things. Do you think, is there an iRobot mafia, people doing robot things? What are some of the <laughs> legacies, or what will the legacy be of uh, iRobot you know, doing so well early oh, days? Oh, I, I, I do. I mean, I don't know if I can list the companies off the top of my head, but there's Berkshire Gray, that's an ex-iRobot guide. There's Endeavor Systems, which was recently sold to FLIR. There's OWL, that's also co-founded by the uh, Atella so Company. The question, robot. the question is, what is it that you did in forming mm -hmm. iRobot that created DNA? Because there are other companies that are very mm -hmm. successful, and their alumni don't do so well. Right. Like, why, why will people that went through iRobot, you know, is it, is it has to do with the trends in the space? Does it have to do with the leadership? I, the values I, you guys had? I think creating a culture where innovation matters, and it doesn't matter where the ideas come from, what matters is the quality of the idea and um, you know, what the potential is, and make sure people can put new ideas on the table. We didn't start to do the Roomba at iRobot, um, and now it's pretty much the only thing that iRobot does. We had like 18 different types of robots, um, so when Joe Jones, uh, who's actually um, my co-founder at Turtle, he invented the Turtle, he also invented the Roomba, so he, um, when he came up with the concept for the Roomba, we were able to fund it, and we just couldn't see 
a reason why it wouldn't work. We kept looking for a reason why it wouldn't work, because he was saying, no, you got to do the simplest thing first. got to make something that will get out there, be really rugged in every environment, not fall down the stairs, follow the walls, etc. And we were always looking for that gotcha, but it never came up. Mm. Was it always going to be called the Roomba? What were some of the names on the whiteboard? <laughs> I've heard that you know Amazon was going to be Abracadabra. Yeah. That sounded <laughs> like right. Cadaver. Like, did you have any uh, interesting stories like that? At the time, we didn't have uh, consumer marketing people at Ivo, but we were you know basically a bunch of engineers, and um, we asked the engineers what they would think about naming this robot vacuum. And uh, Rosie was popular because, you know, the Jetsons made the Mockmaster 2000, the Dirtinator, um, <laughs> the Cybersuck. That's my favorite one. <laughs> Honey, I, I brought home the Cybersuck. <laughs> so it was some of the best 30K we ever spent. We hired a startup branding agency that came out of big agencies. Uh, and I think the lesson there is um, know what you don't know, but also you know, hire a, hire a startup to do it. They'll get it done for a lot less money. I mean, if you do inflation, Nike spent 35 bucks on the swoosh. So yeah. maybe there's something, <laughs> something there. Where do you think robots have made the most impact and why? And five years from now, 10 years from now, is it the personal mm. robot, the uh, direct-to-consumer robot, or the enterprise mm. Pentagon behind-the-scenes robot? You're glad they were there, but you didn't know mm. they were there. Robot that's <laughs> going to have a bigger impact on society. You know, I mentioned the 350,000 um, Amazon robots, and then you know the ones that Six River and others are building, but iRobot has now sold over 30 million Roombas, so that's a lot of floors cleaned and a lot of time saved for everyday people. So uh, I'm very enthousi enthusiastic about that. What I'm the most proud of, though, is the work we did do for the military. Um, the robots we sent to Afghanistan and Iraq have been credited with um, saving the lives of hundreds of soldiers and thousands of civilians uh, by disposing of IEDs. So instead of sending a person up to an IED, they now, as a matter of uh, operating procedure, send a robot first. So I'm very proud of that work. Yeah. What are the downsides of robots? Will robots cause mass unemployment? Will they take everyone's job in this room, like, uh, you know, or, or is there an upside? Like, what, what are the, what, what's the good, what's the bad, what's the ugly? When companies deploy robots, they usually become more cost effective if they do it well. <laughs> Some of them don't. Um, but they become more cost effective, uh, more efficient. And you have to do that as a business, because if you don't, your competition's going to eat your lunch. And I think um, one of the reasons Amazon is remaining competitive is because they did look at uh, adopting new technologies. You know, the, the companies that have adopted robots are the ones that are actually hiring more people. Um, but I have to tell you that as a roboticist, and I'm not talking about AI or computerization of companies, but just the robots, I worry more about what we can't do yet, right? <laughs> um, even at Amazon, the robots are really just doing the job of a run at getting stuff to the right place. The Roomba, it's, it's, it's doing the floor, right? But it's not doing the counters. It's not doing the stairs. You know, it's, it's not cleaning up your dinner dishes. So. Um, it, the turtle's preventing weeds, but it's not going to go in and pick out a weed that's already grown. So the most effective robots that have been designed to date are the ones that are kind of cheating in a way, doing the parts that's easy to do for a robot, um, should be done by a robot, and letting the person do the stuff that's more commensurate with the high dexterity and the higher intelligence. And when you have that base, you can kind of build up the next level and the next level. Whereas if you try to build a, a surrogate human, I don't think you'll ever get there. You know, when you think of self-driving cars, do you think of them as robots? Are I've got robots? a very expensive notion of what a robot is. So self-driving yeah. cars, drones, uh, they're all robots. Yeah. Can we see uh, your front? Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the turtle. I yeah. So, so you know, when you when you vacuum, it's mm -hmm. like you know a, a plane. You know, they don't have to go upstairs. Like. When you're doing the woods and, and your garden, mm. the, there's, there's a lot of challenges. So how do you deal with that? And I, is this broken? I see the, the wheels are at an angle. <laughs> no, it's, it's not broken. It's uh, intentionally designed like that. You see, the, 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 the turtle, it's a, um, 
uh, it, it's got these scrubbing wheels, and it's constantly going in your garden, uh, and it's preventing the seeds from germinating. And then if one dares poke its little head up, whack off with its head with a, a, a little weed whacker. And um, it's solar powered, so you never have to charge it. You, it's basically, it's an autonomous robot that lives in your garden. And that's what appeals to me. It's a real little creature that lives in your garden. How many do you need in your garden? You just need one? Or just one, just one for a 200 square foot garden. And you can see you have it run around. And when it sees a, a plant, it just turns away. And it um, hugs around it and follows the, um, it, it gets the, it covers the entire um, garden multiple times a day. Like it's got people... over a dozen sensors on it. It's got capacitive sensors. It's got accelerometers. It's got bump sensors. And they're all fused together to yeah. make it do the right thing in so many different types of situations that people and, have. And for your garden, do you need more than one? Or you just need one and I'll take care? Uh, one will take care of a 200 square foot garden, yep. but you can just put multiple in if you've got a larger garden or and then what, you like um, robots. <laughs> yeah, you know, so what, what uh, and then supply chain, like if people order these, are they available for the holidays? Uh, yeah, there's so much supply chain uh, problems in, in the world right mm -hmm. now that we uh, we did had a good in your backyard, Chris, in, yeah, your, we, in your uh, uh, garage. We had a good holiday last year, so we put our order in early. So we've already yeah. got through the bottleneck in yeah. the in, in the Los Angeles ports. <laughs> yeah. Last question: What's the future of mobile robots? Well, there's just so much, right? There's so much we can do. With the success of the first ones, people are asking for more. Um, I, I think in, on the home side, you're going to be integrating more into systems, maybe a complete gardening system with the, the turtle that will help you do all the different aspects of uh, you know, what, what can take down a crop, disease, pests, all the different things. Roomba, um, home cleaning robots, maybe they'll be more integrated with the dustbin and you know, maybe go empty them, you know, take the whole dustbin out to the trash can, because who likes to do that? And the Kiva robots, you know, the, the robots um, fulfillment. For <laughs> we did have one for gutters, but I think there might be better solutions yeah. <laughs> in the automation. I think the first generation, you really had to be uh, able to fit in with existing infrastructure. But now the robots have been successful. It's really exciting because now people are willing to change the infrastructure to accommodate the robots. And that sets off so many more possibilities. So I see turtle. It's green. It, it kind of <laughs> shaped like a turtle. Did you want to exaggerate the shape to really look like even more like a turtle? And you kind of uh, pulled back? Well, a, a small round design is actually very good to get around yeah. things, especially in a very unstructured. I, I mean, imagine the garden, right? It's got this mud and this muck and the stones and the twigs and yeah. you know plants that are bushy and they have leaves. And so there was a lot of work put into having it be able to get around and, and keep safe and be able to do it without much interference by by, by the owner uh, for the whole season. Yep. Yeah. And is this version 2.0, 3.0, 4.0? What, what version is this? Of your I'm still going to call this 1.0. Yeah. 1.0. But you know, a lot of people in the Boston area have told me, they come up to me and say, hey, I had one of the first Roombas. Sometimes they were like five generations in. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, and they're probably on 19 or 20 now, right? It's been, oh my goodness, we were launched in 2002. It's now, <laughs> it's like 20 years. Or, yeah. um, so... Um, you know, jumping in, if you see a robot on Kickstarter, you know, just, just buy it. Give the robots a hand because, you know, when robots initially come out, they, um, they do. So I'm a big supporter of Kickstarters when people put robots on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I get them. So uh, we can have more robot companies and more innovation, and the robots will be able to help us even more. I met someone in the audience who was uh, starting a company for robots to help the elderly. Like, we, we got to get more robots out there. So, I mean, what a lot of people want to do is age in their own homes, right? And to do that, I, I think there's a lot of um, applications for robots to help out, to have people be able to stay where, where they want to stay and get some of the tasks that they're no longer able to do themselves done. No, I, I know who you're referring to. You served on a nuclear <laughs> submarine. And I uh, went to MIT after, and he could be doing anything, and he said, I, I want to be in the robot space. So thank you for being one of the leading lights in Boston around robots. Thank you for being an all-star. If there's baseball cards, you'd be an all-star. Uh, I know uh, you've got a bunch of honorary degrees. We don't give honorary degrees here at TEDx Boston, but if we did, you, you'd get one. Keep up the great work, and uh, if anyone wants to hang out with the turtle, uh, be, be here. Uh, may the force be with you. Thanks um, so much. And uh, uh, thank, thank God for R2-D2.